What up, ladies and gents? Happy Martin Luther King Day. We got a show ready for you guys. So here we go. Shut up and sit down. The Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business on social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business, Business Bros. Bros. Yeah! <laughs> Fire time! Fire time! It is that time! All right, all you business pros out there, before we jump into the show, just a quick reminder to please subscribe on whichever platform it is that you're listening to us on today. Give us a like, give us a follow, subscribe, and drop a review. Help other like-minded business owners find value from our awesome guests while we rise up in the podcast rankings. We will sincerely appreciate every single one of you for it. And if you want to be a guest on the show, we'd love to have you on to learn from you as well. Go to www.businessbros.biz slash podcast guest to schedule your time slot. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media at Business Bros Pod. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so excited to bring yet another incredibly incredible guest to the Business Bros Pod. Our guest today likes to tell his clients not to go to work. Seriously, don't go to work. His experiences prove that people are more productive at home, and his obsession with remote work pushed him to develop solutions and, te and technologies to empower people to work from home, the beach, the baseball field, and wherever else. In today's post-COVID world, the ability for companies to work remotely is no longer an optional feature. Their productivity depends on it. Our guest has been developing strategies for businesses to function remotely since long before COVID hit, and he can show you how to stand out above the crowd of post-COVID remote work adopters. Remember, just because everyone is doing it now doesn't mean everyone is doing it well. Joining us today from Capital Presence out of Washington, D.C. Stay safe out there. Welcome to the show, Roy Edwards! <laughs> Yo, Roy, I'm... welcome to the program, man. <laughs> Yo, I love this intro, man. Y'all are... <laughs> Y'all got me geeking over here, man. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Roy, you're, 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 you're blushing, man. You're blushing. All right, dude. Uh, let's let's get some stuff square, square just right out of the way. Uh, let's break it down for people. You've been doing some of this mobile yeah. stuff before mobile was cool or mandatory, whichever way you want to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that space, like, pre-COVID, and, and what what's that change now that COVID has kind of put it in the limelight? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Capital Presence, we've been around since, I believe, 2014, 2015, depending on when we filed LLC. We did a restructure, but that's been our main goal objective since the very, since the jump was remote solutions. Like, hashtag work wherever that's been our thing since, you know, way before it was cool, like you said, right? And so, when we were talking to organizations and, and we we're talking to, talking to commercial uh, enterprise companies and stuff like that before they'd be like, you know, this is great. What you guys are talking about is really good, but it's, it's not really a need. It's more of a want, you mm -hmm. know? And so the bigger organizations had to have it right. Like the, the enterprise organizations, the federal government, which is a, where we do a lot of our work because they're, they're communicating with um, locations on the other side of the country. And sometimes on the other side of the world, right? Like we deal with uh, Hilton worldwide. It's one of our, 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 uh, contract and, and clients and they're global, right? So they're, they've been doing remote work for forever, right? Like that's just, you have to do it. You have to be able to communicate out. You have to be able to, to be able to share documents uh, in real time, but for the smaller organizations, and it doesn't even have to be small as in like, you know, mom and pop shops, right? Mm -hmm. It like, I'm talking hundred, 200 employees, those type of organizations, they didn't have real remote solutions. They might've had like remote desktops or so, you know, some of the old school things uh, when COVID hit, it was, you know, life changing for, for a lot of those organizations in the way they did business and they lost lots of money. So, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time and we've seen, I, I honestly don't think that it's going to go back truly to the way it was. I think remote solutions. And once people get a taste of this working from home thing, you know, I live in one of the most congested places in the world. I don't like to commute. <laughs> it's a terrible well thing. No, let, let's let's hover on that because because okay so first of all yes we've become 
adapted. We've adapted yeah. to working from home. But what you do is more than just hop on a Zoom call, right? I mean, that yeah. that has pushed the fast forward button for people's capabilities of communicating, having a, a meeting. But what you do goes beyond that, right? It's, it's accessing to computers, accessing to uh, a different uh, whatever group together working on projects. You're, you're doing much more than just, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations like we're a doing. A lot of potential for aggressive expansion. Exactly right. You're you're growing. You're growing companies beyond just the video call. Tell me a little bit about what it means to work remotely, not just con uh, not just converse video wise. Yeah, yeah. So you're exactly right, man. You hit it on the head, right? So so Zoom and some of these other video programs, like they've been around for a while, and uh, it's that's part of it. You know, you, it's good to see people like we're having a conversation right now, just as if you were in the room, right? This, this is this is great. We can get some work done, but I can't physically hand you a piece of paper and be like, hey, man, I need you to sign this. Right. right? Like that's a large part of what we do in business, walking down the hall, going to see different things, uh, paper transactions, whatever it is. Right. So a lot of companies prior to 2020 were still doing things on paper. They were still printing things out. They were still signing things. They hadn't really embraced the digital transformation and they were seeing it as, oh, you know, well, we'd like to do things the old school way, which was fine until you were handcuffed to do it the new way, you know? And I say that in quotations, right? Because the, this new way of technology, like if you were set up in a way that you could digitally process your invoices or you could do onboarding paperwork or you could do, you know, some of those processes and procedures that we think about that, some organizations have it way automated and other ones are still printing things out. And they're like, hey, in order to get your key badge, in order to get into the building, we need you to fill out this piece of paper here, print it out, and then go walk it down to Susan at the end of the hall. Those organizations, like that, they had the biggest struggle bus hit in 2020. And those are the ones that we've helped. I mean, we've helped the military, we've helped large, uh, large organizations, enterprise, we've helped small businesses. And, and we all see the same trends where it's people who they have this, it, it's almost like they take pride in their tradition of, of the way that they've done business. You know, it, it's, oh, well, I have to print things out because that's the way that we've always done it. And we take pride in our, you know, it's, and it's breaking this tradition and it's breaking this habit. And those are the ones who, you know, March, whenever it was, you know, April, name the name, the time that we had to to fully go full remote. They had the they had the largest impact, and so we help organizations get get past that, see past that, to say, look, like there's a better way of doing this. We can share documents this way. We can have chat, sure, but where does chat happen, right? What if we pop up a, a Zoom call, somebody else pops up a WebEx, and somebody else pops up a Skype, and now we got three applications, and oh man, where did I send that? Oh, I texted it to you, that's right. And it's like, we have this disorgan this new disorganization where, you know, that we have to deal with. Where it's oh, hell no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's hard, man. Like, it's a whole new structure, new problems that, that you have to adapt to, and you, you have to innovate, and you have to use technology to, to solve it. And that hurts a lot of people's feelings because they, a lot of people are scared of technology or they don't want to embrace it or whatever. But, um, this is, this is here to stay. Not, maybe not in a full capacity where we're all locked in our basements, but it'll be here for, for, it'll transform the way that businesses function. All right. It's scary at first. I'll give you that, right? COVID hits, you know, it's March 2020 and all of a sudden we have to make a huge shift. I don't know what to do. Dude, I teach high school uh, in the mornings and I had teachers that like had a hard time opening their email, much less yeah. trying to do like a video call or anything like that. And you're dealing with people in the private sector who have been doing things their own way mm -hmm. and they've had to overcome the hurdles. So now we're here into 2021. We've had all of 2020 to kind of get things squared away. Uh, and they're now they're starting to get on their feet. Uh, and, and now, now, like you said, there's all kinds of different platforms. Do I use, am I a Google person? Am I a Microsoft person? Am I a, you know, whatever other, am I going all Macs? Am I going all PCs? Do I, you know, what am I supposed to do? 
you know, what, what type of programs, I mean, obviously you're, you're a Microsoft guy when I was checking yeah. out your website, right? You're, you're deep into Microsoft, uh, but why Microsoft over some of these other platforms? What, what is it that appeals to that, uh, to that particular, uh, brand of programming, especially when it comes to office space? Yeah. Good question. So when you get into the Microsoft world, which yeah, that's, that's where I live. That's where my expertise is. So I've been doing Microsoft for, I don't know, 10, 10 years ish. Uh, in, the, in the commercial and federal levels. So that's what I know. That's what I'm a subject matter at. But there are other applications and other suites that are out there, like you named one, Google. What I would avoid doing and some of the biggest uh, hurdles that people run into is think about it. I always, I always equate this to cutting the cord of TV, right? So either you have cut the cord or you're thinking about it or you've already done, you know, maybe you've done it halfway, right? And so when you cut the cord, you were promised that your shows were going to be quicker, faster, cheaper, and at your fingertips, right? Which was mm -hmm. great. And, and in some cases they are. And in other cases, maybe you only watch like two shows, right? Like the office, right? I'm a big office dude, right? And so I had Netflix and Amazon prime and I have Hulu and I have sling TV and I have Disney plus and I have HBO and I have all these things. Right. And so then what happens office gets off Netflix and now I got to go buy another thing. Right. Well, mm. if I only watch The Office, does it make sense for me to have all of these other applications? Because now I might be paying more money than I did when I had cable and everything was fine then, right? And so we see the same thing in business where people go to the cloud, right? They go to this uh, software as a service infrastructure for their organization and then they go out and they just buy the hottest new thing. They go out and they buy Zoom Premium. Right? And they buy Dropbox and they buy all of these other applications out there. And now their money has stacked up and they're actually way overpaying for something that could be simplified. And so that's why I like the Microsoft suite is because all of these, well, not all, most of these third party applications that you're paying extra for are included in your subscription packages. So, and that's where Google is probably their biggest competitor, but it doesn't stack up to what Microsoft office, uh, offers. Um, also, when you get into like the federal and Alliance worlds, like if you're doing business with the federal government, you're doing business with the state and local, you have some sort of a financial compliance that you have to, you're maybe you're regulated by something. Those regulations are built into the Microsoft security software. So you know that, and you can keep track of your security. You know, when you have breaches, you know, when people are sharing external links and documents and stuff like that. So it's a better way for you to keep an eye on things through a single platform where some of the other things that are out there, you're having to juggle and maybe you write your passwords down, or maybe you have to log into like 12 different applications in the day and you're like, all right, I got like six windows open. Where's that Zoom call? You know, so it's, it, it, you get disorganized fast. Whereas if you have a, everything's all about single sign on these days, you wanna be able to integrate whatever you're using into wherever you're housing your domain. That's single sign on. I, I sign in once and then everything else goes and that's quick and easy. And we know we already do a lot of this in our personal lives because how many of us have signed up to a newsletter or something like that with Facebook, right? You click on it and it's like, do you want to sign on this through Facebook? And you're like, yeah, that's easy. And then you click it. And then now you're getting newsletters from all these, you know, clothing brands or whatever. You take that same mentality and you do it to business where you just log in with your Microsoft account. Google does a good job at it too. I would really outside of that, I, I wouldn't step too deep into that and, unless you have, uh, some sort of an on-prem and you have a serious tech team. But if you're a, a, a lean and agile company, I would stick with Microsoft or Google. You're going to get the most bang for your buck and it's going to be quicker. You're going to save money because you're not going to be having to log into like 12 different applications. It, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. That's right. We're going to be flying everywhere. I mean, we already are. Teleportation is next. Now, well, speaking of the future, like what, what I mean, we we've come so far in one year, in one year, we went from grandma, not knowing a thing about a smartphone to being able to hop on a zoom call to do church. Right. I mean, that's speaking right. from my own experience. Uh, but it's not getting any, 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 I don't know, slower. It's getting faster. Things are, are progressing at a higher rate. What should businesses be kind of keeping an eye on or be worried about as we enter uh, an, an inauguration year, as we yeah. enter a new era of doing business, regulations, open and closing? What should we be looking out for? 
Yeah. So first off, before you spend a dollar on bringing any consultant in or buying any new software or trying to keep up with the trends or anything like that, before you spend a single dollar, you need to write down your processes on a piece of paper. Just draw them out and just say, this is, this is what happens. X, Y, Z, you know, steps one, two, three, whatever, draw arrows, draw shapes, you know, use a napkin if you have to. Right. And then once you get everything written out, then you're going to realize, and you're going to take a look at this and you're going to go, man, we're doing a lot of unnecessary things here because you can't automate anything. You can't tech, you can't go into tech. You can't go into these really cool like AIs and machine learning and all the you know, big data, all the buzzwords you hear, right? You can't go there until you really understand the inner workings of your business. So, so oftentimes in the large, it's, it's, it gets really bad in large organizations because the large organizations are like, well, that's the way we always do it. You walk down the hall and you hand it to, you know, Bill. And Bill takes care of it. I don't know, you know, and, and we don't have the process totally worked out. And then what happens when Bill goes on vacation for like two weeks? Mm. The, the process shouldn't stop. You know, there should be a place where people can go, oh man, hey, sh I'm gonna pick up that form, you know, and now we're just doing it in the computer. So the first step, step one is to write everything down. Steps one through 50, if you got them, and then take a look at it and take a hard look at it and say, do we really need this one, this one, this one, this one, this one? And then from there, you can look at trends. You can say, okay, there's a lot of document storage in here. There's a lot of meetings here. There's a lot of task management here, whatever it is, right? I like to highlight it. Like I'm old school, I do print stuff out and I like to highlight things. And then you bring them into tech and you say, okay, you know, our biggest need was project management. Our second biggest need was document storage. And our third biggest need was collaboration and meetings. Okay, cool. You just named what your needs are in terms of your next tech, right? So, okay. So now you can go out and now you can actually start to look at the things that you need. You need project management software. That's number one, you know, so you shouldn't be spending your most money on like onboarding if that, that if that's not a real need for your organization, if that doesn't play a, a role in the biggest processes and procedures and, and you're not doing it that often, you know, like that's the, that's the thing that people get, they get sold. They get sold on these softwares. People call them up and they're like, yeah, oh, that would make my life so much easier. But, but would it really, like, would it really make your life easier? Or did, did somebody just sell you like a, the next SaaS? You know what I mean? Dude. Like, and it's funny because, uh, it, it, they're shiny. They're beautiful. Right. They, they do solve a lot of problems, but what you're identifying here, is it a problem that you need solving? Right, because yeah. I think that's that's a, a key factor in in what's going on. Well, what about what about the the people part of those software? So you know, I I got a lot of kids that are graduating high school. I'm thinking, you know, today I was having a conversation with the wife about my own kids. You know, like, what do you think our kids are going to do when they grow up? Like, what's the world? What what kind of job or career going forward do you think that you know they're they're gonna have to learn or do because I, I know right now we're school teachers and i can tell you right now the traditional school system is not preparing students right. for what the world is going to be like you talk to employers all the time and as the world shifts what are some of the key skills that employers are looking for in in hiring some new people to come in to kind of operate a lot of the systems that we're putting in place yeah that's a great question man so first off so there's a lot of different ways that we can go with this, right? But first off, when when I was growing up, right, there was that buzz where it was like everybody, at least in the Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area was everybody had to learn Spanish because that that was you had to have it a second language. You had to be able to use it. And if you didn't learn Spanish, then what were you going to do when you got older? Right. And so that was the second language that everybody took. I mean, we were seventh grade, eighth grade. You had to take Spanish. We took it all the way through high school and everything like that. Right. They were partially now, correct. Right. You right. Did a language I mean, for sure. Right. I mean, the, the whether or not I, you know, speak fluent Spanish or anything like that, but the keys to learning linguistics and the key to understanding, you know, communication and everything like that was a skill that came out of that, you know, whether or not, you know, I, I, I'm not fluent in Spanish. I took, I studied it for <laughs> a very long time. <laughs> you know, I could probably ask you where the bathroom is, that, and, but other than that, like my Spanish didn't really stick. But in that same way, there are new languages, digital languages, that everybody has to know, you know, whether or not you become a master at like JavaScript or HTML or anything like that is totally irrelevant, but you need to study it. And that's because there, the more and more that we push into the technology world, the more and more things become reverse engineered. Mm -hmm. Steps become this or that. 
And you'll see it with baby toys now where you have this, these toys where you set up things and it says, if this, then that, mm. you know, if it runs into the wall, turn right. That's all code. That's all code is, is if this, then that statements. And you have to understand that. And that's going to be the biggest working because we're going to have so many different applications. And the way that the tech industry is, is, is going right now is that they're trying to make everything easier. Everything has to be click and drag and everything is going to be like, well, it'll, anyone will be able to do it. Sure. Anyone will be able to do it if they understand if, if this, then that principles, you know, whereas you have the tree breakouts, right? Which a lot of kids are learning that younger and younger these days. I mean, my kid, I have a fourth grader and I have a kindergartner and they're both doing if this and that. My son, uh, the year old, he's already writing JavaScript. It's I didn't learn JavaScript until I was like 20. You know what I mean? And these kids are just learning it. Now they're not being like, the way that we learned it was stand in front of the computer and you're going to type on notepad and then you're going to, maybe it'll work, right? Like that's the way we worked. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was hell. And these kids have video games. They have Minecraft. They have, you know, my kid like, right now, my kids my right. kid asked me, dad, dad, can I buy Minecraft Java? I was like, uh. Oh, okay. And like, he spends all kinds of time creating stuff on, yeah. on Minecraft Java. And I'm like, I have no idea what he's doing, but he's YouTubing the crap out of it. Dude. That's another part of this is our kids are not only are they going to be really smart when it gets into engineering and the software engineering world, they're all going to put me out of business here in like 10 years. They're all super smart at that, but they're all creative, like mm. crazy creative. You know, this whole like YouTube trend and everything like that, like my, my kid, he's 10, he'll go live. Like, like nothing, like it's nothing like, Hey man, I'll put a video camera in front of him and he'll be like, Hey guys, we're going to play this video. I'm going to build all this stuff. And, da -da -da. and it's like the creative minds of these kids are just out of this world. So I do think that you definitely have to have some sort of a knowledge of a language. Again, I don't think that means you have to be like an expert in HTML or JavaScript or anything like that. In the tech industry, obviously you do, but you do have to have some sort of an understanding of if this and that, because we more and more we get into technology and the more we get into software applications, there are more that it's going to be reliant on everyday staff to be able to work them. Similar to how Excel was about 10, 12 years ago, where it was, here's Excel, build me a, build me a database is basically what Excel is. And you had administrative assistants, you had, you know, exec secs, you had just project managers who had to learn this application of Excel and we don't think of that anymore. It's like, oh yeah, Excel. It's it's about as basic these days as Word. You know, you have to know Excel. What do you mean? It's going to be like that with like if then if if then then that types of softwares. Those uh, robot they call them like a uh, robotic process automation software RPAs. It's it's going to be everywhere, and people are going to have to be able to know it. Um, but in terms of employers hiring, I think that we're getting away from. And I, I've seen this a lot. We're getting away from your specific job title is this to employers hiring for Swiss Army knives mm -hmm. because there's so much tech out there and there's so many things that businesses are doing and so many things that uh, you know might be here for a little while and then gone the next that they want people who have a wide variety of skills and they want those Swiss Army knives. They want people who can you know, be able to think for themselves and be independent of managers, the more agile type of a people where instead of having to be like, okay, follow this SOP, you know, the standard operating procedure, stand, follow these steps. Instead of somebody like that, they're more looking for people like, I have a problem, don't really know how to fix it, but you can figure it out. And, and it's less, you know, less specific and it's more uh, Swiss army knife. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, speaking of Swiss Army knives, everybody has a little bit more to them than meets the eye. So, yes, your back end is is a lot of Microsoft and and a lot of helping people innovate in their in their particular businesses. But there's other sides of you as well. You host a podcast and you you've been doing some stuff uh, when it comes to that sort of space for a while. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. So when I was like 12, 13 years old in middle school, if you had asked me what I wanted to do when I was little, I would said I, I would have been, I wanted to be on the radio. You know, I, I created a DJ personality for myself. I shouted to the radio people. Like I went to radio stations, mixed one of 7.3 for all my DC people. 
And so I was hanging out there and I was doing podcasts. I had a podcast in like 2009. Like, like back when people were like, why the hell do you have a podcast? You know, <laughs> like, so like, and then I, I went on the radio and I was a DJ and I worked for Sirius XM for a little bit. And like, I thought my life was going to be in radio. Like, that's what I thought. And so when that didn't work out and when I pulled myself out of that industry, um, I always knew that I wanted to get back in it in some form or fashion. It doesn't really like leave you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that, that's like something like, like you guys will always like have a bug you'll always have that itch where you're like i want to be behind the mic you know and and it will never leave you like you don't just get bored you don't just wake up one day and you're like you know what i'm bored of my podcast you know (laughs) (laughs) like it it, it, it won't happen and so he ain't lying (laughs) yeah And, and so i started like as i was moving down this this tech field and i was moving down you know further and further into my career i was like man like i really miss doing a podcast and so we started doing webinars and all this other stuff. And I was like, you know what? Like I'm going back in and I'm just going to, it started at COVID really of this year where I started interviewing entrepreneurs of how they started to pivot. Like during the, during all this, like you have to pivot. All, everybody out there is pivoting right now in one way or another. <laughs> 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 so like, <laughs> <laughs> got you. Uh. <laughs> so, I love Ross. Ross is so good. <laughs> and so, but yeah, like everybody out there is like, you're doing something different than you were a year ago. And mm-hmm. it, that doesn't mean you change your whole business, but you're doing something different. And um, so I started interviewing people and I, and it got like, the more that I talked to people, the more that I understood that people didn't really know how to like go after their goals. Like they were like, oh, well, you know, like, I'm just going to try this today. 1%, I got to get 1% better. Like that was something that everybody kind of understood. The more people that I interviewed there was that idea of, you know, well, you know, I just got to get 1% better. Well, yeah, sure. You do have to get 1% better, but if you don't know what you're getting 1% better at, then how do you know where you're going? You mm-hmm. know? So, so in the agile world, which is a, a technology methodology, software engineers, we do something called uh, yeah, agile where you have your epics. And so if you think about your epics as like, you said you played. You said your kids play video games, so I'm going to assume that you know some, uh, about video games. And in video games, you have that epic quest, right? So there's like uh, 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 what Liz has to save uh, Zelda, right? Mario has to go save Peach. Like you got to go. Like you have this epic quest where you know what you have to do, and then whether or not you know Bowser or Koopa Troop pops up in the middle of the level, like. It doesn't matter because it doesn't change what ultimately you were trying to accomplish. You know, yeah. like that, that, those are called epics in the software world. And so you have your themes and then you have your sprints. And so your sprints are two week intervals of where you have to go hard, right? And then you take a step back, you measure it, you say, okay, that's, uh, that's, that's what I did right. That's what I did wrong. That's what I can do better. And then the one I think is the most important one you say, what can I do differently? And then you adjust. There's that 1%, you know? Because mm-hmm. now we can, we now we have data. Now we can see what we did right. Now we can see what we did wrong. And now we can get 1%. We're losing him. We're yeah, losing him. Rob, Rob's getting a little sketchy. That, clear. I break the clear. You got me? Right. <laughs> yeah, you came back, you came back, you came back. <laughs> it's that Wi-Fi, man. I tell you, I'm fighting, I'm fighting the Wi-Fi over here with my kids, probably. They're probably downstairs just building some like super city down there in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. Speaking speaking <laughs> of uh of of having kids play games. Now, hey dude, uh I, I like that. I like how you how you related that because you're absolutely right. That epic journey, that that ability to you know when you said that, I was thinking of Master Chief. That was like my yeah, dude, going I was on, gonna right? go Halo. I was gonna go Halo. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were I thought because Cortana, she's not like a yes. Microsoft thing. I thought you were yes. gonna dead on go that way but you did that's cool it's cool so anyway but but that chief journey like that that's what you're talking about like every single obstacle that gets in the way that's a great description of what's going on by the way uh, uh shout out to angel he's uh commenting as we go along angel was a guest last last friday uh but dude that journey is what every entrepreneur goes through and i think i think you're right it's far and few between that they know what that epic journey is all they do is fight and they get better at fighting right they get yeah. better at, at at going over these obstacles but you're right. They don't exactly know what they're going. And I, I fall into the same trap uh, 
quite a bit actually because I have so many different backgrounds yeah. that uh, I get the question asked all the time. You know, what is it that you do? I'm like, damn, how do I narrow it down? I help, I help people. Like when somebody needs something, I have so many different connections, so many different areas that I can go with them that I'm I'm consulting them on on what they need to accomplish here today. But how do I narrow it down? What kind of advice do you have to help people find what that epic journey is? Uh, so that they can keep getting 1% better at that. Yeah. So first off that, well, that's a great question, but first off epics, I feel like people get way too descriptive when they're with their epics. Like, like here, I'll give you a bad example of an epic. And then I'll give you a good example of the same epic. A bad example of an epic is I want to run a marathon this year. That's a, that is a terrible epic. Is it a good goal? Yeah. But what happens on February 21st? when you run that marathon, are you done for the year? Like, like think about the office, we'll go back to the office, right? There's Creed, right? He's like, I wanna do a cartwheel this year, right? And he does a cartwheel like right after the meeting and he's like, I'm good for the year. Like, good. no, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like that's not how this works, you know? Like, it's not how any of this works. Right, right. <laughs> so, so like, I feel like people get way, way too specific with their epic goals. Right. So a, a better example of that would be like, I want to become a runner, you know, like I want to become a serious runner or I want to, you know, run whatever, like X amount of miles every month or something like that. If you want to get a little bit more specific, but the big epic goals, you don't need to get specific where you need to get specific is your individual tasks, that one percent to get to wherever it is. Because whatever goal you set for the end of your year, you're going to surpass it if you go about it every day. If mm -hmm. you set, if you write down whatever it is you accomplished, I have a blue notebook here that I write down all my stuff that I have to do for the day. I write out one through five and I write a W at the top and an L at the top. And if I got all five of my things done for that day, I, I circle the W. And if I got, if I didn't get all five done, then I circle the L and I keep score. Mm. And at the end of the year, if I'm looking at my epics, I will, I will pass every single one of them, you know, in my expectations. But since I left that open-ended epic, the way that I wrote it out, I didn't say, I'm going to run a marathon, you know? And then March 2nd, I run the marathon and then I'm like, 2021, man. At least I, I got owned my cartwheel. At least I got right, my cartwheel. Yeah, I got my cartwheel, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Like then what? Then maybe, you know, because then it doesn't leave the door open to be like, well, I want to do a roundhouse or I want to do a backflip. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it really should be. Like, if you want to do a cartwheel creed, then maybe the goal that you should have set was be like, I want to work on like acrobatics or something like that. Or I want to be a, like do some gymnast stuff or something. I don't know, you know, because then it leaves room for that growth, the expansion that setting specific goals doesn't. Dude. Great advice. I, uh, I had a great time talking with you today. Uh, and uh, I want to make sure that if people want to work with you, they can get a hold of you. So if ever, people know, especially for the listening audience, how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, first off, thanks, man, for having me on, dude. I, this has been a lot of fun. You guys had geek me, <laughs> man, all show, dude. <laughs> That, this was this was awesome. So uh, yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, capitalpresence.com, capital with an O, like the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Uh, that's why we're called that. So capitalpresence.com, that's where our business is. Uh, so if you want to work, you know, shoot us a message. If you, even if you just want to see what the Microsoft platform has, uh, shoot it my way. If you want to give it a try, uh, then, you know, tell me tell me that you heard me on Business Bros. Leave that in the contact or whatever, and I'll, I'll hook you guys up with a free month of Microsoft. All right, Roy, a uh, quick question just because, uh, well, hopefully if you're there, uh, well, if you can hear me, uh, the last- Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Uh, you're right there in Washington. Like, uh, what's yeah. the vibe like? Uh, you know, I, I, there's some things that I hear on TikTok, but I can yeah. never believe anything you hear on TikTok. So I'm asking from a uh, you know, first person's point of view. Yeah, so it depends who you ask. Yeah. Honest. Um, I mean, it's, it, um, there's a. Uh, I mean, the streets are shut down in certain areas. The main highway is shut down at certain points. Um, you know, there's a big fear factor kind of into it. But to be honest, like, I, I, I don't, I don't see too much of a change. You know, like they. I really hope it's all kind of just trying to keep people away and trying to like play lifeguard. 
you know, like the lifeguard at the pool, right? They're 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 blowing the whistle at the, at you so that something serious doesn't happen. You yeah, know, yeah. like I, I hope it's more that than there's some serious threats that are coming in and anything like that. But now nah, I, I I think it's I I think it's blown out of proportion a little bit on the media. There's definitely some serious stuff going on. Um and I definitely have some, you know, friends who have are in the different forces, you know, police force or otherwise, and they're, you know, not having a fun time right now, man. So, uh, you know, shout to anybody out there who who's down there in DC right now. I mean, that you see the pictures of people sleeping in the Capitol buildings and, um, you know, local businesses are the ones who have to feed them. And I mean, it, it's definitely wild, but in terms of like the, how it's changed the government, like I, I have plenty, uh, lots of government, uh, clients and it hasn't really affected it too much. Like even when the Capitol stuff was going on, um, I think that they handled it in a way that, I mean, Congress was able to get back in session that night. That same day. Yeah. You know? So, um, and that was a, like a serious event that went yeah. down, you know? So like, I think they got it under control. Um, you know, I think COVID helps this in this instance, you know, because you're not going to see those hundreds of thousands of people gathering at the, you know, uh, on, on the, on the grounds, you know, so like you can kind of be like blame COVID a little bit for the crowds too. be like, Hey guys, nah, just stay home, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, 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 uh, I, I, I really hope that, uh, it, it's nothing, you know, that it's really, it's just being overplayed. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't noticed too much around here to be honest with you. Well, let's hope, man, it's right around the corner. Wednesday is going to be the big day and, uh, we'll see what happens. Hey man, thanks for coming on the show, dude. I had a lot of fun and, uh, you know, dude, stay safe and, uh, and keep on trucking, man. Keep on trucking. All right, ladies and gents, I think Roy froze, but anyways, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great Martin. <laughs> Have a, I don't think I heard you. Have a great Martin Luther King day. That's all we got for you guys today. Peace. And we're out. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the business bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the insurance bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network www.businessbros.biz.